As you can see, I've got the 130 up on the lift in the safety support stand. Because over winter, whenever I've been reversing this truck, it's been juddering, like really bad. So the other day when I had it, I brought it in the shop and I thought, well, let's sort this out. So I lifted it up, spun the wheels, everything was fine. So the wheels aren't binding because I converted all everything to disc. Even on the back, these are all disc. Turned out to be the transmission brake was all gummy. Now when I rebuilt this trans transfer case, I put all new seals in. But I, at the time I didn't have any uh, new shoes, so I just cleaned up the old ones with brake cleaner. But it leached out. And it made a gummy mess inside the brake drum and the shoes. So I thought to myself, well take off the prop, I did this yesterday, I took the prop off, took the drum off, had a look inside, and I cleaned it all up again, I thought, well, oh, that's all right, I'll just clean it up. Took it for a run yesterday, I had to go downtown, came back, and it was, you know, I'd, I'd previously, I'd set the drum up as you would do, uh, just, you know, tighten it up, and then tighten up the, the adjuster, and then back it off, like half a turn, or a full turn, and it, and it spun nicely, nice and freely, so I thought nothing about it. Came back from <laughs> a trip down town and there was smoke bellowing out of the uh, handbrake drum. Uh, as you can see from the picture, this was uh, not good. So today... I'm going to take it all to bits again and actually change the brake shoes because I've got new shoes for it. So this is, this is today's job and, and it's really easy to do. I mean, I, I'm going to get my flashlight but I hope we can see under here. So the first things we have to do is undo the prop shaft bolts. We'll mark up the flange just so we know that these are going to be in line again. Uh, just to note, if you've played around with non-Land Rovers and you'll probably already know this, that... The, the flanges on the Land Rover are, will only go in one of two positions. The bolts aren't symmetrical, all right? So the, the, uh, they'll only go in one of two positions. But I just like to put a little scratch on there just to make sure they're all right. And the same sort of goes at the front. Try to put it back on the way it came off. I, I know, I know it's, but it's, it's common practice because... Land Rovers are very forgiving, but if you were to work on another car, for example, it might not be so forgiving, it might be mission critical that the prop shaft goes back on in the right place. So I'm going to do that now, take that off, and I'll show you how to change the, um, the shoes. They're really, really easy and they're cheap to do. Like I say, over here in Canada, if I haven't got the parts on hand, well, I can't do the job. But since then, I've got some bits and pieces, so let's have a go. So here's the tools and equipment that we're going to be using to do the job. The nuts on the prop shaft, there are still 9 sixteenths AF. So I have a, a little small combination spanner and this little tool which is as good as gold. This is one of the tools that you really should have. You can see how it's polished, how much I've used it. It's a very thin wall socket to go inside the universal joint and it is it, it it is so quick to use so you use that in combination with your air gun and it spins them off at the time there was only half inch available but they come in three eighths so you could use a three eighths gun which is a lot better than using that great big thing because that's heavy um next thing the there is a set screw inside your transmission drum holding the drum to the um, output flange, sometimes a flathead, sometimes a fillet. So you'll need those. What else have we got here? Oh, this little tool. This is a handy little thing to have if you're doing a lot of brakes. Uh, this compresses the brake springs, the hold down springs down. I've had this, must have had this 20 odd years. It's a girling tool, so you, all you do is you push, push and twist, and you can put the um, hold, uh, retaining screws back on. Uh, I'll show you again how to use that. A couple of bungee straps. What do you need those for? Well, this is a 130. And the prop shaft is very, very long. So what I tend to do 
is hang, uh, like make a support using bungee straps to hold the prop shaft up whilst I'm putting things back together. You don't really need it, but it makes life a little bit easier. And, it, <laughs> and we're already on the wall. Um, a pair of needle nose vice grips to try and get the handbrake um, cable off. Now, there's two different types of handbrakes and transmission brakes on these um, 110s and 90s. And this same applies to some of the earlier Range Rovers, etc. And, and discos. Oh, no, the discos had a cable, that's right. But on the earlier Defenders, it was all done by a cable and a lot of linkages that went on the side of the transfer case. Uh, those are notorious for rusting up. So if you're going to strip this down... Uh, take it all to bits and grease all the pivots, all the all the joints, all the pins. Take them all to pieces, grease them up and put them back on. But this one, fortunately, is one with a full cable um, adjust uh, operation. Sorry, I can't splutter it out today. Uh, also, you'll need a set of shoes. These are the shoes for the job. And I've just opened this box and I found it quite surprising because this is a Brit Park kit. And they now include a new bolt with some Loctite on so I don't know why that is. Maybe they're saying in the instructions that the old bolt can work loose on the adjusters. I'm not sure. I've never seen that before, but there must be a reason. But the shoes are cheap, um, and they're pretty good. They're, you know, like the, I, I tried to uh, clean up the old ones, and it wasn't really worth it. Um, other thing you might need, a bit of paper towel. I always use paper towel. I never use rags because... You, you're forever getting rags dirty and throw them away where paper towel is really, really cheap. Uh, so let's get on with it. So we're going to start to take the back drive shaft flange up. As you can see, I've just put a temporary bungee cord up here to hold the shaft up so it doesn't drop down. Uh, I'm under my vehicle. I've put it on the lift. The lift isn't the best lift in the world. But it's better than crawling around, but so that's why I've got a little chair down here. And the reason why I have this lift is because my ceiling's too low. I couldn't get a big lift in. So I start by taking off the bolts and get into the habit of putting the nuts onto the bolts, like that. Just put them back there, and then when you drop them down, you're not looking for them. I'm going to continue doing this because this is a bit boring and then we'll move to the front. I've put a couple of lights under here. It's light enough for me to work, but it might not be too light for you to see. But um, anyway, we're going to just spin these bolts off now. Um, what you'd need to do is try and get your gun in at just at certain places and whiz off, whiz off the nuts. And like I say, this tool makes it's a dream. It's far better... And then put your nuts somewhere flat, say. It's far better than trying to go with a spanner and taking them off, you know, like that. It's a pain. But there's only certain positions that you can get in with your with your tool, like this, you know. There, you see, you just turn it round. So I'm going to take this off, because again, this is a bit boring, and then we'll come back. Sometimes... Supporting the uh, prop shaft, you have to let it go a little bit to get into some of the nuts. You can see the angle of the prop shaft now is a lot wider so you can get better access. And the problem is, there isn't much room here to get your spanner on or key. So what you do is you just turn it around a little bit like that. And then, you can get in. See? That's, that's what you have to do. Um, and then you can get your gun in and whiz that nut off. So now we're ready to take the, uh, the drive shaft off. You simply lift it up. Get a screwdriver underneath it. Because sometimes, the studs can get a little bit damaged or bent. Which is never good. And we put that gently down. The arm requires a fragile object. And then we get the 
screwdriver out because this one's an older transfer case. It's got a flat screw in it. <coughs> Let's see if I can get that off. You can see where No, oh, that's tight. Yeah, that's really tight. <coughs> Wait a minute. Sometimes the tool, the, uh, the screws are a bit tight. So what you need to do is just get right on the very edge of the screw and just tap it, just like that, and then it'll come in. I don't know why it's tightened up, because I didn't tighten it all that much up yesterday. So then you take the screw off, put that to one side. One tool I forgot to tell you about. You need a 17mm socket on a ratchet and go from the back and back off the adjuster. Right, so that's all back though. And then you can simply take off the drum. It is heavy. Yeah. Now we can see inside how it works. So there's a return, these are return springs. There's your expander, well not your expander, that's your adjuster. Your expander arm is here, it's attached to this cable here. So when you pull the brake, you can see it working. Uh, it, pushes, it pushes the shoes outwards. Now they don't look too bad, but they are a little bit gummy. So I think it's time to take them off and replace them. As, in you, can, as you can see, this isn't uh, really, there's no oil leaks. You know, there's nothing falling out the back. What is leaking is the seal that goes in the, if you can see that, the seal that goes in the speedo cable of all places. I've never seen one leak there for a long, long time. So I'm going to sort of replace that at the same time. But first of all, let's give it a, continue with this description of how this, what these parts are. So there's your output flange and you can see there's no oil dripping. Uh, this little piece of metal here is quite important. If, if the oil is going to leak out, it's supposed to go along this channel and then underneath and out through this hole here. Can you see that there? Now this is obviously dry, so that's, we know the seal's not leaking, but sometimes, you know, people have put transmission brakes together and forgot to put this bit, bit in, um, and then you'll get oil, if, it, if this does leak, you'll get oil dripping onto your shoes. So this is nice and dry. I must have put old gummy shoes in before and uh, it didn't work. So, well, sometimes when you're trying to save a little bit of money, it doesn't work. So the next thing we're going to do is take these retainers off here and uh, we'll take the shoes off. The retainers are quite simple. This is a really difficult demonstration to do because I can't really see through my camera. So what it is, is it, it's a pin with a little T on it at the end. And it fits through a spring here, like that. And then there's a cap, and that has got a, a pressing in it so that when you turn, the, put the pin through and then turn it 90 degrees, it locks in. Now, did you see that? So push the pin through, turn it, and it locks in. And it's the same way to get it off. It's really easy to get off. Now I've noticed this one up here is a little bit nasty. But again, this is how we, sort of we use the tool. You, you push it in, you push, it, push the thing in, twist it. But you see, at the same time, I can't do this with a camera, so you're supposed to, with your other hand, put your other hand at the back and hold the pin and push and twist this. And you can see when the spring comes off, how these come loose. So we're going to put the camera down, take the other one off, and then we'll proceed to... So both springs off, it's all very loose, that's all there is that holds this in. So then drop the shoes down a little bit, and now you can see why I've moved the paper towel. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Here we are again. You can see why I need paper towel, because... Grease is spread all over the chassis and exhaust and things. So we'll just wipe all that lot off. We're not getting all dirty. So, drop the shoes down. 
push it out with your thumb, like this, I don't know if you can saw that, push it out, push this, this out, and pull it forward, and then it's off on the other side too. Bring it forward, try not to drop it on your head, and just ease it over these adjusters here. You see, these, these adjusting pieces, these can fall on the floor, and if you do them outside, and you lose them, well, you're really going to be stuck. So try not to lose these things. Sometimes it's a good idea to put a rubber band around it if you're not so sure. And now you can get to the shoes quite easily. So now we're going to take the springs off, like that. So take the spring off, put it safely to one side, and then we can take off this bar at the top, like that. Undo the spring. Take off the spring, take off the bar, and that's that off. And then you can open this up, and this is why we needed the pair of uh, sort of locking needle nose. Because we need to pull this spring back and lock, lock off this, push the spring up if you see what I mean. This right. Oh, no, yeah. You're really supposed to back off the handbrake, but like that. Oh, what the heck is that on the You see, sometimes in our life is a bit of a fiddle, eh? I'm supposed to get that spring off, and it looks like I'm going to have to adjust the, uh, the cable. Sometimes you can get away with it, and sometimes you can't. Let's see if we can get away with it. cable up and then come off and that's going to be easy to put it back on. Sometimes, I mean, the correct way to do it. The correct way, oh dear, the camera's off. The correct way to do it is undo the cable up, up top there, if you can see it. But it's really difficult to get to. So the next thing we're going to go to, we're going to go to the bench and change over those arms. Whenever you do brakes, always check, first of all, they are exactly the same as the ones you've taken off, your new ones. Um, what I want to show you on this setup, and it's, it's a bit difficult trying to film under a car, as you've probably seen, because I can't see at the back of the, the screen of this camera what I'm doing all the time. So this is a lot easier, because I can put it on the stand and I can see what you're seeing. Brakes principally are designed to go clockwise. The drum's supposed to go clockwise. And so that so what you've got is leading and trailing edges on brakes. Um, this this is sort of a a leading edge and this is the trailing edge. And you notice there's a big difference in the two leading edge, trailing edge. If it was to go the other way around it would be a bit bit different it would be a bit bindy and that's why if you're doing rear brakes for example it it will be the other way around you'll have uh, because one wheel goes this way and the other wheel goes that way but the shoes would be in a different position one side to the other would be different you'll get it I'll do brakes one day I'll drum brakes one day and I'll try to explain it a bit better so um, it's principally to uh, help with noise and squeaks and things like this and uh, it's a nice little system perfected over many years now again unfortunately these shoes I dried out the other day but you can you can I don't know if you can see you can feel the gummy they're still a bit gummy and you can see how burnt they've got so that's not good it's the old oil trying to burn off they're, they're not good at all so again, compare everything first. You can see that this is how they go together. Not like that. And not like that. Alright? You see what I mean? See how different they are at the tops? See there? So it's important to keep your old shoes and offer them up 
and make sure that even I'll put it upside down make sure that they're exactly the same next thing we can get rid of that the next thing we need to do is pull off this little circlip here using the flat screwdriver and it should come off quite easy and my look at one there it is take the washer off and then underneath that there is a concave set of spring washers you can see how they are look they're very very simple and then there's your pivot arm we get rid of that and then we get some lubrication because that is quite dry I'll just go and get some this is one of my pet hates about anti-seize in bottles like this the brush never sort of reaches into the bottom corners so you end up sort of throwing a lot of it away simply cut the top off and look at all that copper grease that's in there ready to use and now you can get into the corners look at that it's absolutely full well it's not absolutely full but there's an awful lot there to use and this stuff is quite expensive so with a brush full of copper grease grease up the parts you know, I'll give them a, a generous daub, make sure they all go back together nice. And again, make sure this goes in here, because sometimes these, as <laughs> just like that look, it's a little bit tight. So what I'm going to do is, it'll be probably uh, the lacquer that they've put on here to protect the metal. I'm just going to get a little rat tail file and we're going to open that out a little bit. So you've got your file. You won't have to go too far with this. There, you see? That's all it was, the lacquer. But it's best to get it off. So we can put that away and we can start to assemble this. So again, pin through here. I'm going to put some copper grease on these areas here. Put the arm on. Wait a minute, no, I've got that wrong. <laughs> yeah, put the arm on like that. Yeah, there's some plenty of grease on there. And then the two conical washers, the big washer, and this is where we have fun putting this little clip back on. So this is going to be a real mess of out because this is going to be tight. I might. I might get it on. Let's have a look. No, I'm going to have to put this in the vise. I didn't realise how difficult this putting this C-clip in would be. Now, I have could put this in by pressing down with a horseshoe type clamp in the drill press or whatever. But you guys maybe have not got that and you've only got a vise. So what I've come up with the idea with was to just put a little chamfer with the grinder, just, just, just to plane off the edge, like a leading edge, so that when we put this in, if we tip this washer down a little bit and push it down with our fingers, we should be able to wedge underneath that and clip that in. Tricky. Very tricky. And of course, with this big coat on it, doesn't help, but never mind, let's see how we go on. So let's push that down with our fingers, let's get it started, and then, well, I'm still not happy with that, let's, uh, let's see if we can use this, let's see if we can use this tool, this is a grinder tool, oh, oh dear, whoops, whoops a daisy. Nearly, I tell you something, I'll do this real time so you guys can enjoy this as much as I can. Push it down. Push that clip in like that, and then gently with everything else falling off the bench. See if we can push that. Come on. Well, this is a bugger. Let's turn the amble. Um, no, wait a minute. I know what we'll do. We'll use this. Because I think I'm hitting the metal, not the 
the thing. So let's turn this. There she goes. Let's try that again like this so you can see. What a, diff what a stupid little clip to put in. There, she's in. And we can turn this now like this and give it a couple of quick taps and it's in. That is notoriously difficult to put in. So perhaps that's why I never changed them in the first place. So anyway, that's that done. The arm's nice and free now. You can see it moving. Next, we've got to put it all back together again. I actually uh, ran through the videos I'd just taken to see if they came out very well and I wasn't really happy with them so I'm going to re-explain why I did the, use these vice grips to push this spring up and clamp the cable and this is quite common doing handbrakes nowadays the, um, because if you can see up here there's a, oh, can you see there? yeah that's better there's a terrible little clip that holds the handbrake cable into this back plate and it's um it's difficult to get out but it's not that well, let's see my light's not going too well here. let's see if we can get this oh look at that the battery's fine so what happens is to get that clip off you need to put a piece of tube over the um that that clip so it will compress those little tangs so you could extract the uh, cable now obviously sometimes you don't need to take that cable out. It would be easier to do this on the bench, believe it or not. It would be a lot easier to do this on the bench. But, um, you know, time's money and things like this. So what I'm going to teach you, well, what I'm going to show you now is uh, where we're going to lubricate everything up before we put it all back together. And you can see here what I was saying earlier about there's the pivot points, look. There's the points, the raised points where the shoes touch. And of course, at the same time, I put some uh, aluminium grease on there, but I'm a bit disappointed in that stuff. It dries out, look. It's not very good lubricant. So I'm going to, uh, you know, put some grease on these points, and then we'll come back. Here's the two bolts. This is the one I've just taken out, and you can see it's got some sort of red sealant or something like that, or Loctite. And this is the replacement one. It's got a little bit of blue Loctite on the end, whereas this one's got red all up the shaft. Same size, everything's the same. I'm going to fit this new one. But apart from that, I mean, that's the only difference. Loctite, hmm, not sure about that. It, it can't be Loctite, 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 if you understand what I'm trying to say. It must be a, a sort of a, like a, how do we say, so it doesn't, doesn't shake loose but doesn't lock like solid like glue it must because otherwise you wouldn't be able to adjust your brakes so anyway we're going to fit this one and then we'll be ready for assembly so this is the uh, cable fitted now to that um, lever perhaps you can understand now why I had to push the spring up because you've got to hook this piece in and this end here is uh, bent over a little bit so it's not a straight parallel drop in you've got to sort of hook it in and this is the reason why I had to I can't video it at the same time it's very difficult and you can see how it, it, it's easy to drop out so I'm going to just put that back in and then uh, we'll put this shoe in uh, just a little bit that when you take off the um, vice grips the spring will push forward and keep that in place I just wanted to note that like I say it's very difficult to do this um, with, you know sort of with one hand under a vehicle in the dark very bad sound etc so you know bear with me it would be so much easier to do this on the bench but this is real time this is what we do all right so next of it really next step is really putting the shoes in The next step to do, first, the, the step we have to do to, to assemble this uh, transmission brake is we put the spring in first, 
and then put this uh, this bar in here and then lock one over the top of the other. They will go, you'll stretch the spring a little bit, but it will go over the top. It's easier to do this now than to do it later. And then we can uh, assemble this by simply putting this up to the top. You can see I've already got the pin up there. See if you can see that. I've already got the pin through the hole here. So that's ready to go. And we can put this one in as well. Well, first of all, before we do that, though, we're going to put this, the bottom spring in here. So hopefully you can see now the springs are in, the top and the bottom spring, the handbrake spring is in for the, for the linkage. And now is the time we can lift all this up into place and we're going to put the shoes in the bottom into their housing into the little location pegs under there. That's a little bit tricky, but not impossible. So I've put the shoes into the bottom adjuster. The spring goes over the top of the adjuster, not underneath. A good little tip I would say, if you've never done this before, is get your smartphone out, take a picture of it, take a picture of everything. Do that, in fact, do that with everything that you're not really sure of, because it's so easy nowadays to take pictures of things. Let me see if I can get that shadow out. So there we go. The pin's coming through here. It's so easy. We're almost there now. And now we've got to put it up. And I think, I don't know if I told you, there we've got some copper grease on the points of, uh, contact points of here. So it's all going to be nice and free. I've lubricated these with copper grease as well. Everything's lubricated up, it's time to put it back together. So by using this tool, which I showed you earlier, we were able to put the pin through the back and then twist and turn this 90 degrees to lock the spring and the retaining clip all together. And if we look at the side, if I can see that, let me light up there and you can see this a bit better. You can see how tight you have to compress those springs. They're very tight. There's not much room for uh, playing around. So that, in a nutshell, is all the handbrake mechanism put together. Once you're happy the shoes are in, you can put the drum on. That's really easy. Put the screw on. Again, these bolts are not evenly spaced. They'll only go in this way or this way, this hole here. So... Um, the next thing is to take to do the adjustment on the shoes. Now these are new shoes, they haven't been settled down properly, but hopefully I can show you how to do that pretty easy. What I do to get the shoes right is tighten up the drum and then with a the hammer I just shock the drum a little bit like this. What I'm trying to do is centre the shoes because they could be dropped a little bit. You know, the, sh the, the brake shoes themselves could be dropped. So what you're trying to do is shock them into the right position. Now that's too tight. But what I'm going to do now is back it off a little bit. See? Hey, see it's binding a little bit there. So again, we get the hammer. Give them a tap, still binding it a little bit. So what we're going to do is back it off a little bit. See, I didn't move it that much. Still binding. There, you see, you see how it's free there? But it's binding there. So when it gets to its binding spot, a little tap. Just a little bit, let's see where that is. There goes my spanner. You know, that's not too bad. It's binding a bit, so I'm going to bind back it off just a little bit. A little bit of bind there, listen, just a little bit. Let's keep on at that. Ideally, 
you could go inside and pull the handbrake on and off a few times. But because I, I've got the car in there, it's a bugger to get up, up and down. I'm getting old, you know. Let's buy it, back it off just a bit. There, that's a little bit better. A little bit of binding's not too bad. You know, it's just a high spot on the shoes. In the old days, they used to... Uh, in the old days, they used to have a machine to uh, chamfer, uh, shave off any high spots on the, uh, on the brake shoes. I don't think they do that nowadays. They just put it in and let the drum do it. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to put the prop shaft on. That doesn't really need a video. So we're going to wrap this up now. I think I'm happy. I'm going to have a check under the vehicle, make sure everything's um, all right while I'm, while I'm looking underneath. I do see a little bit of oil under the engine, but that seems to be because I had to change the, uh, the bung on the oil pan a little while ago because it was missing. Well, it was very bad, so it sprayed oil over the axle. So check all your universal joints. Have a check round. Everything's dry. And uh, yeah, should be good. Talk to you later.